Hi, and welcome to Wealthy Living Conversations. I'm Lisa, your host and founder of Wealthy Living. It's here that I connect with a variety of humans to have inspiring and insightful conversations where I do my best to draw out their stories, knowledge, actionable ideas and wisdom to help you live a meaningful, connected and well life both personally and professionally. So today I'm chatting with a wonderful woman, a truly inspiring and resilient woman, Izzy Ephra. She is a Malaysian native based in Sydney, Australia. So welcome, Izzy, and thank you for joining me today. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Yes. So um, as you know, as you would all know, in different times of your life, you will have experienced that life is messy. And for Izzy, it's actually been really quite messy. But she's found a way to embrace this be- the beauty in the mess and to find more peace and calm in her life through making art. So Izzy, I'd love if you could tell the listeners a little bit about your story and, um, and what brought you to Australia. Okay, um, so I come from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, I've always wanted to live abroad, um, but because I come from a very strict family and being the only girl in the family out of, I mean, I have three older brothers, so my father was very strict with me. Um, So as I grew older, um, I couldn't really live on my own again because and in in my communities like you live with your parents until you get married and sometimes even after you get married you still live with your parents so I was like nah I can't do that um and then um years went by um my mother passed away in 2007 and it was then that um I thought of you know my chances of going abroad um it's over. Um, and then my father got married again. He remarried and it was then I decided, oh, okay, it's time for me to move somewhere. And I did. So I moved to Cape Town and lived there for about a few years. And then I came back to, went back to Malaysia for about two years. And then I moved to Sydney. Um, so a bit about my background. Um, I have some pretty traumatic events happen to me from the age of um, about seven and up to about 30 plus. And there are many, many different events that happened to me. Um, And I didn't remember most of them until I actually came to Sydney and which was when I started seeing a therapist. Mm. and it was through the therapist that I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder and extreme anxiety due to all the trauma. Um, trauma. Um, and then the following year, I was diagnosed with this in 2016, late 2016. And in early 2017, I was diagnosed with DID, which is dissociative identity disorder. And through and also through the therapy um, sessions I discovered that I could paint and it was then that I realized um, I could make something out of my artworks Um, so that's how I started painting and what led me to move to basically my traumas um, are the reason why I'm in Australia like I just can't see myself living in Malaysia anymore because of what happened to me yeah wow thank you for sharing that and I know that you know it's been a really um difficult journey for you and there is a lot of freedom for you coming to Australia so um I welcome you here and I and I hope that this country brings you um so much of of what you so much healing and um, it seems to be doing that um, in a lot of ways already. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So when yeah. you say you discovered art um, through your therapy, what do you mean by that? Um, 
I've always known, I mean, I've, I never saw myself as someone who was a um, creative person. My brothers were, my brothers are, they are all creative people. Um, and I remember growing up, I was like, oh, I wish I could draw like, you know, my brothers, I wish I could design. Um, but, you know, I think because of part of the childhood trauma that I had, um, that I experienced, um, it led me to believe that I wasn't good enough for anything, mm -hmm. um, that I couldn't do anything. Um, so I never really tried. Um, I think, you know, in, in secondary school, I, I was like pretty much, um, I got A for art and stuff like that, but it was nothing I concentrated on. Um, so during one of the therapy sessions, um, I, went to the center and then they had um they had some paints and canvas and whatnot so i told my therapist like would it be okay if we talked while i painted i just want to splash some colors some paints and she was like yeah sure so we did that and i remember i was just splashing the pain and i was just um talking to her and screaming and and crying and swearing and an hour later I felt so exhausted and I was like oh okay we're done and then she was like did you look at what you just did what you just painted and I was like yeah and then she was like that's I mean she was like that was that's actually very very good and the colors you chose so I was like oh yeah whatever didn't think much about it and then she's like would you like to leave it at the center for you know for the for the women at a women's center. So I said, yeah, sure. So I left it there. And then the following week, um, apparently people were praising the um, art piece. Um, and then I decided to just continue painting. I told my partner and he was like, okay, we gotta go out and get you some supplies. So I did, uh, we did. And um, it was from there on that I started painting and I started sharing it online on my social media and people started commenting and I also shared them all my artworks in a particular Facebook group. Um, it's called the Stand In Family. Um, it's for those who are queer and you know they feel like they don't have their real families are not supporting them for being a particular way. So all these people were supporting me and encouraging me to keep going. Um, and it was from there that I sold my first few paintings. And when I told my friends, they were like, oh, so you're an artist now. And I'm like, what, really? Um, so that, that's how it all started. Yeah. Um, yeah, what an amazing and story. And congratulations. That's, that's incredible. You. And, you know, just following that path. And I suppose I imagine that it has helped you bring more self-trust and more self-love and more confidence into your life, being able to, especially with the external validation that um, people are really enjoying it and really liking what you're painting. It gives you that added inspiration. Yes, that definitely. And um, I think for the first time ever, I felt, um, I felt supported um, and I don't know, like, yeah, I felt, I felt very alive even like, and you know, it's, it's not so much that, I mean, everyone, everyone wants validation, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially if you've gone through childhood trauma and then every other thing you, you want an external validation. But this, when I first got them, it was just, it was just different for me. It was, yes. I felt as if people understood where I was coming from and they could relate to my artworks and and that felt amazing for me absolutely you know there's the the connection that that you're able to bring about through your art so yeah. if we could just take a little step backwards and you sort of said to me that you know one of the things that happened when you went to see the therapist here is that you got diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder and with um, DID. So for yeah. those that don't know, DID is um, formally known as multiple personality disorder. Yeah, that's right. I think in Australia, that's probably what people would remember or know it as, and it's only yeah. becoming more more common with the new, new name. Um, yeah. 
if you don't mind, I'd like to just explore a little bit about um, DID because I think for a lot of people, they might not know what it is and, um, and what it is for you because I think it's different yeah. for different people. Yes, it is. Um, so DID is a rare um, condition, um, mental health disorder. Um, I think in general population, it's about 0.1% to 1% of people that have DID. Mm. Um, so um, I am very sure people are familiar with the series United States of Tara. Yeah, I loved it. Um, <laughs> yes. So it's pretty much like that. Um, I mean, it is like that. Um, so I was quite shocked when I was diagnosed with it. Um, only it wasn't because I didn't know it doesn't or didn't exist. It, it was just, it was just like, oh, like shit. What do I do now? Um, because it sounded it sounded so serious and and then I realized it was multiple personality disorder which obviously I'm so familiar with before because you know all the Hollywood have portrayed um, so many characters with um, the ID or multiple personality disorders so um, it made sense to me um, that um, I have the ID because I would in the past um, hear voices or my friends or my family would tell me there are certain things that I did and I just don't remember doing or saying um and then I would tell I would talk to my therapist about it and then after like I think like I said like a few months after therapy she told me that I have the ID and then she explained to me what it is and um then I was like, oh, okay, so I have Altus. And I think because I'm in Australia, I feel safe here. I don't feel threatened by my uh, any of the abusers. Um, my Altus started coming out, like they started introducing themselves to me. Um, at the moment, as far as I know, I have three Altus. Um, and alters are parts of you. It's part. They are all parts of me. Different parts of me, and they all. But they all have their own characteristics, their preferences, food preferences, um, beverages, movies, music genre. They're all very different, and they are also of um, different ages. Um, and um, it, it's quite. Um, it can be fun. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes. It can be, <laughs> sometimes it can be. Um, quite exhausting as well because um, you know I, I switch whenever we switch it's it's always tiring um, I will feel a bit dizzy and if a person really knows me if a person knows me very well um, he or she can tell when when there was a switch or there is a switch um, but yeah um, I don't see it as um, as a disability or um, in a way of me having a, a life that works um, because collectively we work together um, when I'm feeling out of it when I'm feeling down and I just don't feel like um, doing anything one of them would come out and take over just so that there are certain things that are done for the day um and you know when i go out and there were times that i didn't feel very safe i felt as if um i was being followed and that's what cptsd is you're constantly having all these um triggers so one of them would take over and just like you know tell me like don't worry you're safe we're here um we're gonna walk with you so they will get me from point a to point b safely um and it's like we we take care of each other um but again like i said um it can be exhausting and at times i feel as if i'm going insane um 
and the fact that sometimes you you sometimes I hear other voices and I keep thinking, oh man, are there more altars that I'm not aware of, or they're slowly introducing themselves to me, that kind of thing. Um, but I, you know, I read a lot. I'm part of uh, a DID community, and um, I don't feel alone anymore. I mean, given that I have three authors, I'm never alone, actually. <laughs> but with the community, I, I have people I can talk to that really understand um, where I'm coming from and what's happening and what I'm going through. So would you say then, thank you, that's a really um, enlightening explanation and it really gives and feels like, um, I, think, I think it makes us all feel like, well, maybe... Maybe I've got it too. <laughs> but well, obviously it is, we've it don't. Like we've all got different parts of ourselves and different yeah. voices in our head that, you know, yeah. that protect us. But the difference with this is that it, you dis disassociate. Yeah, I um, dissociate, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that's a big difference. So if you're listening and thinking, oh, maybe you've got it. Um, yeah, there is, there is that um, aspect to it of the disassociation. So it sounds like it's in a lot of ways... Um, people that have DID it's just like a creative way to deal with the unbearable pain yeah yeah pretty much yes yeah I would say so um you know like um I talked to a few other people with DID from all over the world and you know it's, it's not always the same for each person with DID um and people would say that integration is not um the thing that you want at the end of the day um, because for some people with the ID integrating with their altars just don't work mm. um, but for myself um, I need that integration um, for my life to work for me to move forward yeah. um, because if I don't I I have moments in the past where I didn't want to integrate because I felt as if they were actually sabotaging my plans or even my life um but that made it worse for me not to integrate with them or at least work with one of them um for me to move forward um so so yeah um if if you were to speak to other people with the idea they might have a different idea um they might feel differently but this is what works for me um which is to integrate with the office or with one of them yeah. Or at least know that they're going to help me when I don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. yeah. And so do you think then that your um, diagnosis of both the complex post-traumatic stress disorder and of the um, DID has, has helped you? Has the labels actually helped you? Um, they have actually. Um, the labels have helped me understand myself better. And also, um, you know, I understand uh, or understood why I did certain things in the past and how I reacted. And even now, um, you know, with the labels, I don't use it as an excuse, but at least for myself, I know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm reacting because of my past because of what happened to me because I didn't, wasn't loved enough. I wasn't given much attention or I was, you know, abused. I was pushed mm -hmm. around and stuff like that. So the labels help me understand myself better and help me um, plan my life in a way. Like, you know, like I, 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 yeah, it's, it's just, it, they've been really, really helpful to have the labels. I guess for some people, even myself, actually, in the past, I just didn't like labels. I don't like to be called a certain thing, um, you know. But through therapy, I learned that for myself, labels, they do help me mm. um, to focus on what I need to do so that I can have a life that works for me. Um, you know, a life that I feel safe in, um, where I feel I can be free to be myself, which is which is which is why being in Sydney has been amazing because I am able to go out freely um and enjoy the company of men and women um and um without having to hide who I am, without having to 
um, watch what I eat or what I drink because I come from a Muslim background. Um, so it's been, it's been very, very good being here mm. and to have those labels. They have been huge help. Yeah, that's 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 really interesting. And I think it sounds it sounds to me like from what you've just shared that they've really helped with self compassion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So if we move a little bit more onto your art and your creative process, how do you think that the creative process has helped you with your mental health and your well being? Um. Art has helped me um, tremendously. Um, I paint when I am processing a flashback or a nightmare, or even when I feel angry and um, I need to express it, I paint. Um, you know, instead of smashing plates or glasses in, in the flat I'm like oh, okay I'm gonna take out my canvas and just start splashing paint um, and then after that I feel a lot better mm. it it just um, it's a way for me to express myself where I feel safe and my alters are able to do it as well mm. um, so yeah, it's it's all about just processing my feelings, my emotions, and just letting it all out without harming anyone else around me. Um, so yeah, so brilliant. So it's like a really beautiful healing process, and it yeah. and it sounds like it allows you to embrace those shadow parts or those dark bits about yourself as well. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, my artworks, um, definitely not for everyone because some of them can be very dark. Um, mm. Yeah. Do you think that it's yeah. helped you and given you insight into your condition? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, art is something that is unique and every artist brings a piece of their heart and a piece of their soul to each artwork. Yeah. Um, but your paintings are especially unique because as you shared with me off air, that sometimes you bring four or th your three or whatever um, yeah. different altars to one piece. So how do the altars yeah. come out in your paintings? Um, so... Sometimes when I, uh, I, I, when I start the process, like I, I have a canvas and then I have the colors and um, I start painting. And while I am processing or thinking of a, of a particular event that happened to me, I tend to dissociate. And that is when one of the authors would switch, uh, they, we would switch and then they would continue. And, and then... I don't know, half an hour later or something is done. And it's a work of me and another altar. Or sometimes, um, like I told you off air, um, collectively all four of us would work on an art piece because each of us, uh, we are processing our trauma. Um, so I'm not sure if I said this earlier. Um, so each altar is of a different age yeah. where um, the trauma, the, um, the abuse happened. So each of them process um, the trauma. And um, so when we work collectively, the outcome of the art piece would be like, I don't know, like it's, it's you, I, I think if you really look at it, you can see it's a work of, four different people yeah. yeah um so that's why all of my artwork they are of different types of um medium tools um it's never the same thing i don't work with just palette knives i don't work just with brushes it's always different um and kind of bizarre and all over the place because all of us will work on it or one of us will or 
me and, and the, my little uh, will work together. So it, it will come out different all the time. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. it's super unique, you know, amazing. So, so you're saying that they all have their own distinct style. Do they all yeah. like to paint together or do they prefer to paint on their own? Do their own um, one of, um, one of them, uh, she likes to paint on her own most of the time. Um, so I do let her, um, but most of her work, uh, um, most of her work are pretty, pretty dark, very red, very black. Um, so not that I'm not happy because that's her way of expressing herself. Like she needs to get it out. Um, but I haven't shared all of my art pieces with people only because I think, um, they might not be able, I think it was, I think, to be honest, it's because I don't want them to judge me um, for, for all the things that happened to me. But then I realized, you know what, um, if, if they don't get my art, they just don't. And it's okay, great, like, you know, whatever works. Because <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, it's all about me and my alters and what we are expressing. Um, and if someone can relate, great if someone thinks it's over the top or they think it's ugly or whatever it's great as well like I don't mind yeah. um it's to me at the end of the day it's all about us processing and expressing ourselves and that helps us to move forward mm. um rather than you know just sulking and um being like oh I don't want to get out of bed or whatever so I paint so that I can get my day started I can move um yeah forward like I love the word move the words move forward because it's so important to me because I feel as if I've been holding myself back because I didn't know what was going on with me until I was diagnosed mm. um so yeah so do you think that the alters are aware that they share the body with other artists um so like I said because um I integrate with with most of them so so yes they do yeah yeah um one of them um she doesn't like to be called an artist because she just doesn't think um she doesn't think she is um but um we tell her to just deal with it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely fascinating so how do you know which voice to listen to when you're doing an art piece do you are you the is there is it like you're possibly the primary and you have the different voices or do you completely embody and transition into the other alters um how do i um again it's not um i it, this is not something that i think all people with the id do or i think some of them do I do know how to, when I don't dissociate, like I know that I just need to listen to my voice. So I would just somewhat block them out um, and just paint because, I mean, sometimes I do want to create an art piece that is mine, mm. what I'm going through. Um, so in order to do that, I can't have them saying anything or talking to me. No, <laughs> oh, Izzy, no, Izzy, yeah. not the red. Use yellow. So, <laughs> so I do like, you know, before I start painting, I would say, look, okay, guys, we have to have a meeting right now. Um, I need to paint. I need to express myself. So I don't need you, all of you to interrupt or tell me, oh, no, not that color kind of thing. So I do block them out and I just, just for half an hour or whatever, I'm just by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and when we switch and they take over, they can do the same. Um, but I'm constantly in like in the back seat, kind of watching, but I can't really say anything. It's also because um, out of respect, I want them to also be able to feel safe and express themselves and do whatever they want. Um, so, so yeah, I do, I am able to just like, okay guys, like 
say stop like I just need to do this by myself um, but there are times when when you're switching um, you do like you know when I dissociate if you look at me and if you are really paying attention and you can actually see when I am dissociating and there's a switch like um, like my partner he's very very observant and he knows like he could I'd be sitting with him and um, like 10 minutes we were talking and then suddenly he would say, oh, hi. And he knows that it's another altar that has come out. <laughs> and then they start having conversation. They start doing things together, cooking or whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm back again. And he was like, oh, so you're back. Yeah. So yeah, I do kind of feel like, okay, dissociating. And then I can feel like someone else is just transitioning yeah. or taking over. Yeah. So what are their names? Oh, do you have, do they have names? Um, yes, they do. Um, so that is um, Stella. Um, she's 26. And then there's my little um, Tia. She's um, seven. And she, she recently wanted to turn nine. So she's actually nine now. She decides that she wants to be nine. And then there's Avery, who is 15. And Avery um, is a recent alter that introduce herself to me um i think about a couple of months ago yeah she has always been there but she just decided to come out and introduce herself to us yeah amazing so, so as so far as i know there are three of us yeah yeah fascinating so when we go to this incredible exhibition of yours that you're going to have one day there's going to be painting signed by izzy painting signed by my little painting signed by stella yeah. by um uh what was yeah one? um tia avery stella yeah, yeah. avery avery and then avery. and then some signed by four so it's yeah. incredible. You can, have a, you can have a whole exhibition, a whole gallery filmed filled with well, just, um, yeah. <laughs> your artwork, but by four different artists. Incredible. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Um, what a gift! So, how is um, what has painting opened up for you? Um, that that I can be free. That I. And finally, um, safe. Um, it has also opened up an opportunity for me to introduce myself um, as an artist, um, and just you know let people know that even though I have. C PTSD, I have um, DID, I am still able to function mm. um, because I think most people feel that a person with mental health disorders or issues, um, they aren't able to live a life that works for them. Mm. Um, and, and so far my art has told me that um, I can. Mm. Um, and Yes, it's it's really something um, I want people to to know about. Um, yeah, how beautiful! So, when at what point did your did making you turn making art turn in turn from hobby to business? Um, at a point when um, I shared my artworks in that group that I told yeah. you earlier um and then after that um people have been asking more and more about um uh, my artworks and other stuff I've done and then I said oh, okay maybe I should promote myself <laughs> and so my partner created a website for me and through that to the website I've introduced myself on social media and whatnot but um then I also realized um, I want to create art because I want to express myself. Um, I don't want to create a particular thing just to sell. Mm. Um, I want people to buy my art because they can relate to it or they see something in it. Um, so yeah, that's what it, um, my art has been for me. 
Yeah, That's how I started selling them. Yeah, beautiful. So you're a true artist of the spirit. <sighs> That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so what does success mean to you? Um, what does success mean? Um, cool. Um, don't know, just, just um, being, being here um, after all that I've gone through and being able to express myself and do something I'm very passionate about um, and, um, I don't know, just for me at this moment, uh, just being here, being, being free um, mm -hmm. is a huge success mm -hmm. and um, being able to, to do things my way instead of what um, society or community wants me to do back then, back home. Um, for me, that's it. That's a success. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I think that the world receives such a gift from you when you do achieve that success of just being yourself and giving other people permission to do the same. So that's beautiful. So what, you know, that probably leads on to then what message you want people to gain from your paintings? What do you want your paintings to represent? Um, freedom, beauty. Um, you can do whatever you want to do if you, if you put your mind to it, put your heart into it. Um, yeah, it's just something like that. Um, haven't really given it a thought actually, um, but it, it is about just being able to be yourself and do what works for you rather than what people want you to do or expect you of you. Mm. Yeah. And as part of, do you think part of your, um, message in being an artist is also in in kind of a a different way maybe sharing and informing people about DID and um sort of giving people like today you've you know really shared so much fascinating information which I'm sure people have gained insight and understanding about DID that little bit more and do you think that by because your altars all do come out in the painting, it gives that opportunity to also educate in a way? Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think um, not many people know a lot about DID and I would like to, um, not educate, but I would like to share my, um, my experience with the ID with people, I want them to understand what it's like for us and that it's, um, it's not as bad or as crazy as what Hollywood tend to portray people with the ID. Mm. Um, we're not scary. Um, I, I, yeah, I would like to do that. Like, um, and I think my art, um, is one of the ways I can, I guess, um, make people understand more about DID. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's a fabulous way to help people understand more. It's really non-confrontational and not, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a really beautiful way of, um, of sharing by sharing, you know, even the story of different people have, that have come out in different paintings. So yeah, yeah thank you. That's beautiful. Um, I just love how, um, you're honouring your unfolding story and I'm sure by sharing it, you're giving others people permission to do the same. So thank you so much for your courage to chat with me today. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Um, it's, um, it's, this is actually the first time um, I'm talking about my art, my story and also my diagnosis of the ID. 
So it's, um, yeah, (laughs) thank you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege and I absolutely adore your vision and the way that you're making art um, is really enables you to really connect to yourself and using it as a vehicle to connect with others and bring about change. Thank you. So Izzy and I would love to hear from you. So what's your biggest takeaway from today's conversation? Leave us a comment and let us know. And if you'd like more information on Izzy, be sure to follow her art on her Instagram and her story on her blog. Maybe Izzy, if you can share what those links are. Yep, sure. Um, So my Instagram is um, Izzy Alpha, I-Z-Z-Y-E-L-F-A. And my website is Izzy Alpha. Dot com. And the blog? Um, the blog is, um, it's easy on the i.wordpress.com. I-Z-Z-Y-O-N-E-Y-E, easy on the i. Yeah, Wait, cool. I spell that right, but yeah. <laughs> and I'll, um, I'll put all of those um, in the show notes below anyway. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends and subscribe for more conversations with wonderful humans whose stories, knowledge and actionable ideas and wisdom can help you live a meaningful, connected and well life both personally and professionally. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lisa and I'll catch you next time on Wealthy Living Collective Wisdom Conversations. And always remember, connection is medicine.